Good morning. I'm on my way to class for the last day of practicals for this holiday module of networking at the beginning of third year, which is great, but it does also mean that come Monday, I have to start third year good and proper, and I'm quite scared about that. But uh, today's video is gonna be where I am in my degree, what I've done so far, what I've got left, and just like a general update on the computer engineering scene, because that's uh, a big part of my life, and uh, I wanna talk to you about it. So, it's much later now. I didn't get killed on the road this morning, thankfully. Um, so today's video talking about computer engineering and my progress theory is gonna be split up into three parts. The um, general overlook at the degree and my progress through it, like where I am in third year, what I've still got left to do and what I've done already. Then part two, the specific modules that I have to do this semester and that I'm nervous and excited for like at the same time. And then three, just the general attitude to the degree um, maybe like and the approach to learning I'm going to take this year in the semester so as to better learn what's going on in the course. So yeah, let's get straight into it. So, Computer Engineering at Tux is a four-year course with all of these modules uh, a requirement to pass and get your degree at the end of your term of study. So, if you look here at the top, I passed all of these modules in first year. I was really grateful and really happy with that. And then in second year, at the start, I managed to pass everything except NMC and the two maths. The COS module there, that was our coding module in particular, I battled with a lot and spent a lot of hours working on. Uh, these big assignments and that, they were auto-marked by the computer, and so I ended up getting a lot of zero out of like 200s for those assignments. So I put an inordinate amount of time into passing that, and I managed to pass that, but because I didn't pass that, I failed NMC and the two maths modules, which was also quite important. Um, and then in second semester, I managed to pass everything except 238 because I couldn't take it because it was a, it had the maths as a requirement. Now, just in January now, I've finished the NMC summer school, so I've passed that module, so we can scratch that off. So this semester, I'm going to be taking all of the third year modules I should be taking, except EAI, because I can't do it because it has maths as a prerequisite, plus the two maths from the beginning of second year. So all in all, I'm doing six modules now at the beginning of third year, which is going to murder me. And this is definitely going to be the hardest semester of my degree, simply because third year is the hardest already, and I have to repeat two math modules. At the end of the year, it'll be a bit easier because I'll move one of the third year modules to fourth year because the end of my fourth year is pretty chill than that. Well, not chill, but less ridiculous. And so this next couple of months now, these next couple of months are gonna be the hardest, probably the hardest months of my life so far, work-wise and like difficulty-wise and definitely adversity. But if I can make it through these next few months and pass everything, like life is gonna be pretty damn good. And so I'm still on track to finish my degree in the allocated four years if I manage to pass most of my modules this semester and don't fail anything that then blocks something important. You can see in this flow chart um, the lines that go down show prerequisites and so if you don't pass maths one you can't do maths two, that kind of thing. Um, so if all goes according to plan, I can still finish in four years. And it's interesting because lots of people are already on the five-year program and it's very much accepted to do the engineering degrees in five years, but I really don't want to do it in five years. Uh, in particular, financing a degree for another year and another year of accommodation and that uh, without a salary is really not appealing to me. And like, yo, well, you know, but I'm not fiscally responsible at the end of the day. I'm very privileged to have parents who can afford to send me to varsity and pay for my studies here and that. But it's the principle, you know, if I can be out there in the working world and earning a salary and kind of, you know, making my own way through life, I would really appreciate that as opposed really appreciate that as opposed to having to stay in and study another year at varsity while a lot of my friends go out into the world and start living their lives. And obviously you mustn't compare yourself to other people, but that's where my headspace is at. And so now, to give you a real idea of like what I'm going to be up to in the next couple of months, let's take a detailed look at each one of the subjects that I'm doing in the next couple of months, in the next semester, and see what computer engineering is all about in the beginning of third year, arguably the most important and most difficult year of the computer engineering degree. So this is a document that outlines our degree at Varsity. BEng Computer Engineering, four years. So let's scroll down to second year. And da 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 da. Yeah. So, the two modules that I have to repeat from second year now are WTW258 and WTW256. Uh, that is Theory and Solution Methods for Linear and Differential Equations, 
uh, theory and solution methods for first order nonlinear differential equations, Laplace transform, basically all about differential equations and how they can be used in engineering problems. In particular, last year we also did some other modules that were really interesting because they went on about differential equations and they used differential equations quite a lot just to prove like mathematical pro engineering processes and that. And so obviously fundamentally important. So I'll be doing that again. And then 258, I didn't like this one. Calculus of multivariable functions, directional derivatives, multiple integrals, polar cylindrical and spherical coordinates. Not particularly difficult to understand conceptually, but I battled extremely to see the 3D shapes in that that they use uh, and apply those to problems and then you know actually use them in uh, engineering problems and to just visualize the problem. So you don't have to put a lot of work into that. Uh, then at the end of the year, we're we'll doing W2W238 again, but let's not talk about that. Now, third year. At the beginning of third year, I have to do EMK310. So EMK is the big hardware-based introduction to system designing microprocessors module. It's basically all about microprocessors and how they can be used in engineering applications, in particular robotic field, to do really cool stuff. And so this is where we have that big robot car building module that I've talked about before, where we have to build the robot car that automatically follows a line on the ground and that you have to implement AI and sensors and digital logic and obviously a whole lot of different uh, varied disciplines into this one module where that accumulates in this big project. Um, it's a big group-based project, so that's going to be quite interesting. But yeah, this, we learn assembly for this module. Uh, the assembly coding language so that's going to be interesting but it's all about microprocessors and more programming and just how to use development boards in that to you know to use use existing development uh, kits and boards in that to solve engineering problems so that's going to be quite a big group based and project based module but I'm looking forward to that I mean they make it quite fun so I'm really looking forward to that then we have to do analog electronics 310 which as you can see here is basically just electronics on steroids amplifier concepts gain input impedance output impedance bandwidth power power efficiency uh, op amps limitations programmable diode circuits logarithmic amplifiers uh, this is just going to be a lot of maths this is basically an extension of eli from last semester so that is just going to be a massive amount of maths and electricity and i'm probably not going to enjoy it that much but uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Semester two, semester two, semester two. Yeah, electromagnetic compatibility 310. So this is basically, from what I've read here, uh, electricity and ESCOM 101. Uh, induction, electromagnetic spectrum, digital signals, circuit theory versus microwave techniques, transmission lines, transmission line equations, wave propagation, uh, power flow, transients, S parameters, electrodynamic fields, plane waves, propagation and dielectrics and conductors, shields, lenses law, Faraday's law, Maxwell's equations, transformers, storage fields, radiation field, near and far fields, mechanisms of radiation. Yes, there's a lot of shit here. Oh my god, okay, now I'm getting scared. Electrostatic induction, capacitance, magnetic dipoles, permittivity, permeability, conductivity, magnetic materials, non ideal components, resistors, PCB layout, PCB shielding, grounding methods, power supply decoupling, ground loop, differential and common mode radiation, and cable shielding. So basically, electricity and its application in big systems. Um, although that one's quite difficult, and once again, it's just a huge amount of maths. Um, I really didn't know what I was signing up for when I picked computer engineering. Hey, if I'd known there was this much maths, I probably wouldn't have signed up for it. So it's probably a good thing. Uh, you must always try and challenge yourself. So that one's going to be very interesting. And I've talked to some uh, fourth year students in that before. Shout out to you, Mike Tells. Um, and apparently this one is, is also just like, oof, you learn the maths and that and you get through it. But it looks interesting at least. I mean, it's good to know how big systems work so that we can further criticize how shitty a job ESCOM is doing. This uh, intelligence systems is our artificial intelligence module that I won't be doing this semester because of its maths prerequisite. But uh, I'm sure my friends will have some good fun with it and I'll get to it next year. But then here, this is very interesting. I was just looking at this today. We're doing this, this module this semester. Engineering Management 310. Um, people have told me it's really shit, but it looks really interesting to someone like me who's really interested in business and economics and project management. Um, basically, just how to do engineering projects, project organization, legal contracts, case studies. It's apparently a huge project-based module, like you have to design a product and take it from design all the way to completion. But you see how yeah, it's all just the nitty-gritty of planning, scheduling, uh, breakdown structures, how to get people to work together, how to uh, you know document the creation of a product, project life cycles, project phases, planning and scheduling, task definition, cost and budgets, cost estimates, 
um, lots of Excel spreadsheets it looks like, uh, decision making among alternatives before and after tax. So yeah, very interesting, not so much a pure theory maths based engineering module, but more of like a project based, probably more of the kind of things you'll actually do as a, an engineer one day, as opposed to just going through maths equations and that all day. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Do, 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 if we scroll down, yeah, then that looks like it's it. If I look at my spreadsheet, that's everything that I'm doing this semester. So uh, really interesting, going to be a lot of maths as always. Uh, and as someone whose maths is not brilliant, it's going to be interesting. But uh, we'll do our best, eh? We'll do our best. And so, it's really gonna be a difficult semester and a difficult year, and I'm gonna do my best uh, to stay positive and optimistic throughout the year, because what else can you do in life? But it's gonna be definitely a difficult year. Um, I've spoken to my friend Chris, shout out to you, my boy, um, who's done very well on the course so far, and just uh, asked for some advice and that about how to better my studying methods and that, because obviously last year, I wasn't studying properly and effectively enough. And so I'm really hoping to change up some things this year. In particular, uh, he gave me the advice to focus more on the tutorial problems, focus more on textbook examples, that you really understand concepts and that before making summaries and before making, uh, you know, trying to remember pure theory and that, which is definitely what I was still doing from high school. I was still just trying to summarize the information, wrap my head around concepts, and then leaving very little time for actual practical examples, which is not what you need to be doing for engineering. And I, you know, it's ridiculous that it's taken me this long to figure it out, but old habits die hard. And when you really want to know what's going on in a subject and you really want to wrap your head around complicated concepts, perhaps I'm finally realizing that the way to do that is not to struggle and to make summaries and to read the lecture slides and that, but to dive into the textbook, to start with the examples and then to go back to the theory when you need to and continue further down that path. And then things, you know, like phone in the cupboard method for uh, defeating procrastination, um, and keeping a document of errors and mistakes that you've made in the past in a subject so that you can go back to it and refer to mistakes that you've made in the past and that you don't want to make in the future. So I'm going to do my best, hey? It's going to be a really tough year, and by tough, I mean really tough. But I've got the friends and family to support me, uh, and that really do motivate me to do well. And you know, at the end of the day, if you do five years in your engineering degree, guys even do it in six, you know, you still walk out with a great degree and you go out into the workplace, into an economy that's desperate for engineers and for skilled workers. And so I'm really optimistic about the future and that just the pain and suffering to get there is unpleasant when you think about it all to come. You think about how much work in that is to come and how much you've still got to get through. But you know what? It's quite all right. I'm, uh, I'm willing to put in the sacrifices. And so yeah. That's all I wanted to talk about today, just wanted to talk about my degree because it's the beginning of the semester now, you know, I've been thinking about the degree and thinking about the future and I've been looking at my plans and looking at all the details for what is to come and I just wanted to share that with you. That's what I'm going to be spending most of my life on in the next couple of months, basically for the next two, maybe even three years. And so, yeah, hope that you come along with me and see all the great things that are going to happen this year. And yeah, I'll talk to you later. Please uh, subscribe if you haven't, because I'm planning on doing lots of good stuff this year with the YouTube channel, changing some things up. In particular, trying to make more scripts for each video. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.